Far to the southeast of our country, across the Atlantic Ocean, is the homeland of the Negroes. Their noses are flat and their lips thick. Their hair is woolly instead of being straight or curly like ours. The white peoples, who live mostly in the colder countries, have had to think and to work hard to find better ways to get food, clothing, and shelter and to do many, many other things which the Negro does not know about at all. The white races have proved themselves superior to all others in many ways. People who, like the white races, have learned much are called civilized to distinguish them from uncivilized or barbarous people like the African Negroes. And flowers are clean. Well, the hunger for Third World Bookstore and, and, and for the, the example set by Gwen and Lenny Johnson was, um, it was inspirational. I met Len and Gwenny Johnson um, in the mid-70s, I was in high school, and at that time, the only place to go for black books in the city was Third World Bookstore. It was a safe space, almost like it was our, our Canada, our Underground Railroad, that's where the Underground Subway took us to. The whole Third World philosophy, that's why they named it the Third World Bookstore. The Third World was the coming together of the, the ex-colonial world. So Third World was the big uniting term, terminology, political terminology at the time. So it attracted everybody. And here's your history. Here's who you were. Here are the people who preceded you. Here's what our example was in this city here. We actually were able to have a reconstituted African diaspora uh, right there in the location of the Third Old Bookstore when it was on, on, on Bay, south of college, and then when Lenny moved up, finally wanted to be in a black community, decided that they'd move up into the Bath or some Blore area to be where there was a, a sizable black business and, and community presence. That these two African Canadians born in this country would have a flock of people from the rest of the world, the Caribbean and Africa, Latin America, come in there and they actually become our grandparents, our parents, our, our source of inspiration, our source of soothing, our source of politics, and a way for us to see the world. That doesn't go away. They knew that they were inspiring. And that kind of inspiration hits you here, man. Hits you here and it hits you here. Never go away. I miss the place, man. I miss that spot. I miss that spot. It ended up after Gwen and Lenny died there, the store closed. But for those of us who were around that time, the Federal Bookstore is not dead. Gwen is not dead. Lenny is not dead. Because we knew them. We saw them. We experienced their passion, their compassion, their love for the people, their love for the, the, the history. They're the ones who made us feel that we meant something. You know what I mean? You can't get a legacy deeper than that. Somebody that says you are somebody. You come from a long lineage of somebodies. You come from the original peoples of this planet. You come from something divine, glorious. And go out into the world and make your mark, baby. That's the legacy, I think. And we see that legacy reverberating. Even this project, if you will, comes out of that bouncy reverberation of spirit, beauty, wonderfulness, dedication. I want to write you poems that are matchets of the mind, poems that grip at heartstrings, poems that make bodies shudder at your sufferings and the sufferings of the people and the strength of the people in that suffering. I want to sing songs of the children singing in the rain falling, in the grass growing, in the sun shining, in the world loving. We shall learn to swim with matchets against the moons in our hands and flower darkly and flower darkly. Thank you. And flower darkly. You withstood 
you built on, you push through to a new dawn, a towering inspiration, bringing forth the foundation for a new nation. Sing, little children, sing all the world, sing in the curves, every boy, every girl. Machete is rising and a flowering has begun.